We're back for episode three. I'm Claire. I'm Isaac. And uh, yeah, we're nearly halfway. Well, we're halfway through. Halfway through. Five episodes. Past half. Yeah. Yeah, past halfway through. So what have we got, got coming up, Isaac? We're talking about managing, management of switches. We're talking about licensing, which is a really important feature. And then we're going to talk about scripting as well. You know, scripting, uh, how network administrators use scripting to make their jobs easier because we all love easy jobs. But you're not going to make scripting scary, are you? Because no. I know there's a lot of people, no. me, uh, yeah, no, that scares the, me. No, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is the welcome series. We're actually going to do two scripts on screen. And you'll see, uh, you know, you look at it at first and it looks frightening and then you go, oh no, that's so easy, I can do that any day. There you go. Well, we're here to teach and you're here to learn. So, uh, are you ready? I am. Let's yep. go. Let's go. Let's talk a little bit now about the management of a network. This is probably the most important task for a network administrator, managing every one of these switches, configuring these switches. The job is not an easy job, and there are various approaches to doing that. For those running a single switch, well, there's a way that you can manage that. For those running two or 300 switches, well, it's not so easy as just r walking up to an extreme switch and plugging in a cable and managing from that side. So in the next section, we're going to be going through the different options available to you as a network administrator to manage your network. The first management system we're going to be talking about is one that's actually built into the switch operating system, into the Exos switch engine, and that is called Chalet. It's a browser-based approach, and you don't really need any connectivity to the outside world to be able to manage that switch. So there's no connectivity to the internet or anything that is required, additional software. It's all built into there. It is popular. It is mostly popular with really small setups. You can quickly log in, do what you need to do, and you're out the system again. It's not the most comprehensive. Of course, if you wanted to do lots of switches, you can't do that. So it has its limitations, but it's a tool that we have to be able to do this. On screen, you're gonna see a couple of screenshots of what this tool actually looks like. And you can see like most other tools, it's just a graphic tool with a lot of options for adjustment, for changes, etc. Whereas the previous management option, Chalet, manages a single switch. When you want to manage many switches, the tool of choice is Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine. Why do we say it's the tool of choice? Because it really is a platform that can manage cross-platform devices. We're not talking here just about extreme switches and extreme access points. It can manage all network devices from all different vendors. It doesn't matter where you have or what devices you have from which vendor, Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine can manage all of that. And it can manage it in many different ways. For example, it can manage it on-prem if the requirements in your company or organization that is that management needs to be done without any connectivity to the internet, it can fit in that. It can also, of course, fit into a cloud solution. So it offers a lot of variety, but the feature that sells it the most to our customers is the end-to-end -end visibility of your network. One single pane of glass. From one place, you can see and manage your entire network. When we say manage, it's using SNMP, uh, Simple Network Management Protocol version 3, because that's the most secure, the most robust version that network tools should be using. Is it possible to use version 2 and version 1 if you have older devices? Yes, of course, it is possible to use those devices uh, as well. It will talk to them if it needs to talk to them. There might even be scenarios where when you do a scan of your network, it won't automatically pick up device. Well, Site Engine will allow you to go in and manually add a device into this management platform. It's a great tool. You would need to license each device that you manage under Extreme Cloud IQ, 
But that one feature, the ability to manage cross-platform devices from one pane of glass, that for an administrator saves you time and time is money. Now, this is a cloud-managed network management system. That's a lot of words. But basically what it means is you are able to manage your entire Extreme Networks infrastructure from the cloud. On top of this, you have a couple of distinct features that make it a really attractive proposition for management. The first of those is Digital Twins. Digital Twins currently allows you to create a digital copy of your existing switch infrastructure. That will then allow you to manipulate the system and think, what if I rearrange the network, my switches, in a different way? You can test them, you can create configurations from them, and when you're happy with whatever has been done, you can push that into your live system. So think of it as a testing bed for your current infrastructure. The second is the AIML, uh, Artificial Intelligence Machine Learning. From all the data points, from the metadata that's pulled off the switches, we can notify you when there are anomalies, when the system detects anomalies on your infrastructure. And we can tell you about those before you even have any idea that something is going wrong. That is a great tool that's going to help network administrators handle the sheer amount of volume that networks are going to see as we go on. The best part of all of this is if you join Extreme Cloud IQ and Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine together, because what that does for you then is it allows you from that single pane of glass to get the full benefits of AI, ML, Digital Twin, as well as linking you to all your external devices, uh, network devices that you have in your infrastructure. And again, from one single pane of glass, end-to-end -end management. So why just talk about it? Why don't we actually show you on screen what it looks like to manage a system using Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine? We took two switches, one from Extreme and one from another vendor, and we chose to update the firmware on both of these switches. We set them off at the same time. It's an interesting watch. Now the video goes on for over 30 minutes, so it's quite long, but if you do want to watch the entire video end to end, you can always just scrub through it. You can follow it on this QR code on screen. We'll show the first couple of minutes and I'll talk you through what's happening on screen. So now you can see we've got both the reference images for the extreme switch, as well as the switch from the other vendor. And we're going to start now the download process and uh, then we'll just wait and see how it goes. When you purchase Extreme Network gear, you get a base license with it. That license gives you access to 99% of what our customers use on a day-to-day -day basis. There is another tier called premium licensing, and that is for those customers who really need the full functionality of a switch. So let me give you an example. With base licensing, you can have three concurrent BGP connections. And for most customers, that will be more than they ever need on a switch. But you're going to have those customers that would need much more, maybe 10, maybe even more BGP connections. Premium licensing is the answer. It opens all of that up. Another example could be uh, MacSec. With base licensing, you don't have access to MacSec. But if you need to encrypt that link between two switches, that premium licensing is what you need to be able to unlock that. It's not a feature-by-feature -feature basis. If you get the premium uh, license, it unlocks the entire feature set for you. So where can you find this information on what base license and premium license gives you? Well, you could, for example, look in the data sheet, like you see on screen. Over here, you can see all the base license features. And if you scroll down, you can see the premium license features. It's 
it's really important to understand that the base license and the premium license are related to features, to functionality of the switches. When you buy a switch, the base license comes with that switch. You only need to purchase a premium license if you want to unlock the full feature set and capabilities of that switch. Now, the management side of it, if you want to manage that device, either in Sight Engine or if you want to manage it in Extreme Cloud IQ, you need a license. We call that a pilot license. You purchase the pilot license, it allows you to create a, an account in Extreme Cloud IQ, one account only, and that then allows you to operate all your devices, manage all your devices, as long as all of those devices have a pilot license. If you want to unlock the power of the digital twin, of artificial intelligence, of machine learning, for that you would need a co-pilot license. Why? Because we give the customers a choice. If they just want to manage their system, they're happy to go with pilot. If you want the next level of management ability, co-pilot is the one that does it for you. CLI-based scripting allows a network administrator to create a list of commands that can be executed manually with a single command or automatically when a special event occurs. CLI-based scripting supports variables and functions, so they can write scripts that operate unmodified on multiple switches and in different environments it really allows you to significantly automate switch management. There are two ways to create scripts. The method that you choose depends on how you want to execute the script. If you want to create a script file to configure a switch or a switch feature, and you plan to execute that script manually, you can create a script file. If you want to create a script that is activated automatically when a device or a user connects to or disconnects from a switch port, for example, you should create the script with the universal port feature. For reference purposes, a script file is just an ASCII text file that you can create with any ASCII text editor like Notepad or WordPad. The text file can contain CLI commands and can use the scripting options described in the documentation. The universal port feature that we mentioned earlier allows you to create dynamic profiles that are activated by a trigger event, such as a user or a device connecting to a switch port. These dynamic profiles contain script commands and cause dynamic changes to the switch configuration to enforce a policy. Network administrators need to understand scripting. It can't do your job without it today. But Python scripting is another one, another method that you can do scripting and was introduced in Extreme Exos or Switch Engine version 15.6. Python scripting provides the ability to customize your switch and to add functionality quickly by downloading and running scripts without the need for engineering expertise. Python scripting is extended using the load script and run script commands. Anything that needs a repetitive behavior and a repetitive approach can be converted into a script or you can use an API to manage that. And again, for network uh, engineers, using a GUI to do things is really important. You need that. It's a powerful tool. But scripting adds another layer, another, another level of functionality. And network administrators who know scripting, who know Python, who know this language, they can really take full advantage and make their life a lot easier. Now, another great thing about scripting and writing Python scripts, for example, is that once you've written that script, it's going to apply to a switch or a set or a group of switches. And that means that you can take that and you can run it on many different platforms. It doesn't only have to be Extreme Cloud IQ Switch Engine or Extreme Cloud IQ. 
anything that has a management functionality will be able to trigger off one of these scripts and write and do whatever it needs to do that you've programmed into the system. So we've spoken about scripting and what you can do. Let's take a look at some real world examples. The first one would be when an administrator wants to introduce a delay, a 60 second delay into the execution of a script. And there you see the 60 times 1000. All we've done over there is we've just said, convert this into milliseconds. So execution of this command will mean it will wait that amount of time and then trigger. Here's another example that a network administrator would have to do, maybe not every day, but occasionally. And that is to create 100 VLANs with an IP address range. And in this example, 10.1.1.1 slash 16 to 10.100.1.1 slash 16. First command we use is to enable the CLI scripting. Then what we do is we set the variable count of one while the dollar count is less than 101 because we said we wanted to create 100 VLANs. And then we say do create VLAN a V dollar count, configure the VLAN with V dollar count, IP address 10 dot dollar with the count dot one dot one slash 16. Set the variable count to dollar count plus one. And that's to give it that incremental uh, numbering system that we want. Set file count, count plus one, end while, and finally show VLAN to show you all the VLAN. This short set of commands over here would probably take an administrator who was trying to do this manually a couple of hours to do with a very high possibility that mistakes would be made, really high. You create a script like this and you can run it as many times as you want perfectly with no errors at all. This is the power of scripting. So as we come into land on this episode, we've covered, again, quite a lot of stuff today. We've covered management of a network with switches, both extreme and from third party. We've spoken about all the different solutions that you can have. We've touched on licensing and we've mentioned uh, licensing, the premium uh, licensing and the base licensing. And then we looked at scripting and we went through the possibilities of what scripting can actually do. We listed the different varieties of scripting that you can have. And finally, we ended up with a few examples that even if you don't know or consider yourself a script kitty, you should still be able to understand. But in the background, we've still got some stuff running, that firmware update. Let's go have a look and let's see if it's completed already. Ah, it's still running. Oh my, I don't know how long this is going to take, but it's going to take quite long. If you want to watch and see what actually happened at the end, go and uh, follow that QR code. You'll see the whole thing there. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.